Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Mindy. I'm a homeschooling mom of four kids. In today's video, I'm gonna talk to you about why I switched math curriculums for my middle schooler. So if that is something that interests you or if you're interested in curriculums for your middle schooler, then I encourage you to stick around. So I've been wanting to make this video for quite some time, um, but you know, life <laughs> happens. And so that's just kind of how it is lately. We're into our, I think, third week of homeschool and it is September 10th, I think. Um, I'm filming this on a Sunday and my kids are running around. So you'll probably hear them in the background. So that's just how it is, guys. I mean, I have four kids. So anyway, um, my middle schooler, his name is Ethan, and he is in eighth grade this year. We have been using Math UC for him since we began homeschooling. So I started homeschooling him technically for a full year in fifth grade, but we really started in fourth grade during the pandemic. So we started with Math UC, and that's just what I've chosen for him. Now, if you watch my other videos, you'll know that I use the good and the beautiful math for my other children. You know, there's a whole host of reasons why I choose different curriculums for my kids. It's based on what works best for them and their learning styles and strategies. So last year, Ethan was in seventh grade and we did pre-algebra. The book is kind of gross, sorry. But anyway, so we did pre-algebra. The book is huge. There are, let's see here. There were 30 lessons to pre-algebra. And so if you watched this video right here about how our year went last year, you'll know that we got sick over and over and over again, and it was a nightmare. And so I feel like math with Ethan wasn't, um, consistent enough. So he didn't fully grasp those skills and those concepts. I went back through and I looked at all of the lessons that we actually did and I just checked them off. Now this doesn't mean that I didn't cover some of the other things because I did them um, kind of like sporadically or I did them like a different way but I didn't use this specific curriculum towards the end of our school year. So I'll show you what we did do with Matthew C. So this is what we did cover. If there's a check mark, that means we did that lesson. Now, Matthew C is a mastery program. So like for instance, negative numbers addition, you are adding negative numbers the entire week. So this is worksheet A, B, C, D, E, F, and you are doing that the entire week until you master it. Then you move on to the next topic. So you can see this is what we did here. And then down towards the end of our school year, I did these things, but we just did them in a different way and we did not use Matthew C. So if you watch my curriculum haul videos, you'll know that I picked up Algebra 1. Moving into Algebra 1, if you really have not mastered the concepts in pre-algebra that we did last year in seventh grade, then you are not really gonna be ready for Algebra 1. And that is what we discovered. So Algebra 1, for some reason, my book did not have a, table, have a table of contents. So I had to go online on Matthew C and I printed one off, a table of contents. For some reason, it's green here. But anyway, there are 35 lessons for Algebra 1. And I typically follow a 36 week program. Um, in New York State, we have to have 180 school days um, as it is, and Ethan needs 990 hours of instruction per regulations of New York State. But anyway, my point is being that there are 36 lessons, I'm sorry, 35 lessons in Algebra 1. We follow a 36 week schedule. So basically you have to master, um, because like I said, Matthew C is mastery based. You have to master one lesson every week before you can move on to the next one. So if Ethan is having difficulty with a lot of these um, topics here, then we're not gonna get very far in Algebra 1. So I really kind of assessed and tweaked what we needed to do and what was best for Ethan, and I really prayed about it, and I was lost for a while. I didn't know 
what to do. I didn't know if we should try to um, move on with Algebra 1. We did try a couple lessons. It was not pretty. And um, I didn't want him and getting frustrated. And I knew that with our family dynamics, I have three other kids. Um, one of them is a toddler who's getting into anything and everything. And then I'm teaching a first grader and a pre-K student. And so we just would not be able to persevere through Matthew C. Algebra 1. So I made the decision to order this here by the Critical Thinking Company. It is called Understanding Pre-Algebra. In here, there are 15 lessons or units, whatever you might call them. So I'll show you a flip through of what this has in it. Okay, so this is Understanding Pre-Algebra. This is by the Critical Thinking Company and it's geared toward middle school math. If we take a look at the table of contents, there are four chapters here. I think there's 15 chapters total. So this is for chapters five through eight and then nine through 12, and lastly, 13 through 15. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of a flip through so you can get an idea of what is in this book. of square roots and then over here it has the answers and it says that a free downloadable detail solutions is also available at their website each chapter also has a review at the end of their pages it's usually one to two pages so here's for chapter two the review page and then here's an example of what the chapter three review is like and then it goes on to the next page at the end of the 15 lessons, it also has a final exam, which is also a handful of pages, which obviously goes over everything that you've learned in the book. It also has a glossary, so you can refer back to what some of those vocabulary words might mean if you forget or you need to remember them. And then there's also a reference sheet to give you formulas for volume, area, surface area, slope and probability, the Pythagorean theorem. So I don't know that many people would be using this as a full curriculum or if they would just use this as like a supplemental tool. That's what I'm choosing to do. I am choosing to use it as a full curriculum. That is going to be our big focus for math this year. So my plan is to revisit pre-algebra and then next year in ninth grade, we're gonna go back to math you see algebra one. So um, we'll see how that goes because we really do like this program, um, but it's just, Ethan was not able to do a lot of these beginning lessons because he didn't have the prior knowledge from pre-algebra. He hadn't that hadn't been made concrete for him. And he is a very good math student. So I wanted to go back and revisit pre-algebra because of what happened to us last year with getting sick and whatnot. I also did wanna show you two resources that I picked up. This one here, which is for middle school math. And then this one focuses on pre-algebra and algebra one. And so these are gonna be little reference tools for us as we're going through this Critical Thinking Company's book. And so we'll see how it goes. Sometimes in your homeschool, you really need to assess and tweak if something is not working for you. Um, in my particular case, you know, I we love the curriculum, we love Matthew C. We are gonna go back to it um, next year in ninth grade. For this year, we really need to go back and solidify the skills and concepts 
for pre-algebra. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you'll consider subscribing for future content and I hope you'll join me on our day in the life to see how we're using this curriculum. See you next time.